the Himalayas, where Earth meets sky. Prowling this broken landscape is one of the most rarely seen creatures on Earth, the snow leopard. So elusive, only a few are privileged to catch a fleeting glimpse. Veteran filmmaker Hugh Miles and his team spent four years fighting freezing temperatures and dangerous altitudes. Sometimes these mountains can seem cruel and the sub-zero temperatures feel unrelenting. Their dogged determination is rewarded with never-before-seen footage. But glimpse it for a moment, and then it's gone. Some parts of our planet are so brutal that any creature surviving in them achieves almost mythical status. And when a creature thrives in these conditions, it becomes legendary. One such creature lives here in the world's greatest mountain range, the highest, the most hostile, the Himalayas. Towering above India's northern borders, these unforgiving peaks are its hunting grounds. The creature is a beautiful big cat. Merely to see one is a dream, but to film one, nearly impossible. It's a wildlife filmmaker's holy grail. snow leopard. This is the story of two remarkable men who dared to think the impossible. They believed they could find and film the snow leopard up close and personal. It would take the team four years to conquer this Everest of the natural world. Like many mountain adventures, it was a quest that was to end in both tragedy and triumph. But all that was to come as veteran filmmaker Hugh Miles and his team headed into the mountains on their first expedition. I've wanted to make a film about snow leopards for as long as I can remember not just because I love cats, but because the bigger the challenge, the greater the rewards. Or so they tell me. <laughs> Trouble is, I think I'm probably too old to keep climbing these precipitous mountains every day. So I hired wildlife filmmaker Mitchell Kelly to spearhead the challenge. I've been crazy about snow leopards ever since I was a young fella. They're beautiful and they're rugged and they're mysterious and they must be perhaps the most potent emblem of wildness left on the planet. When you look at terrain like this, you realize why snow leopards are so difficult to film. But it'll be almost impossible to film them alone. So up ahead is Numgil. He's the horseman, and he lives in the village just up valley. And he's an incredible animal spotter. We also have Cheetah as the chief guide. And they've, uh, they've both seen snow leopards quite a few times. These local mountain people are incredible. They're tough, they're resourceful, and they have a great sense of humor. And no doubt they'll need all these qualities before we finish this okay. film. But we need a special place as well as special people if we're to succeed. And we think we have that too. Snow leopard populations are fragmented and they're thinly distributed throughout the remotest mountains of Central Asia, 
places like Russia, Mongolia, China and Tibet, right through the Himalaya and as far west as Pakistan and Afghanistan, possibly over two million square miles. But a particularly good place is in the northern Indian state of Jammu and Kashmir. And we're in Ladakh's Hemis National Park, just here. We think this is a good place, not just because of the rugged terrain that the snow leopards use, but because the people who live here do see snow leopards from time to time. How many there are is a mystery which we hope to solve. We're camping in the heart of the steepest mountains because this is supposed to be perfect snow leopard country. It's certainly tough warming country. In fact, we're probably crazy to even try to film snow leopards because they're so rare. But that's what makes them so desirable. You know they're out there somewhere. Trying to find them becomes an obsession. Fortunately, these ghost-like cats leave clues all over the mountains, and helping us understand them is old friend and local snow leopard expert, Rinjin Wanchuk. He's a great observer, and is already finding signs of the big cats not far from camp. Lovely fresh tracks, just a few hours old. Snow leopards like to keep in touch, so leave messages for each other, and we hope we can learn to read them too. Rinchin tells us that snow leopards need lots of space, so at frequent intervals they scrape up these piles of earth and sometimes pee on them to make sure other cats keep their distance. Surprise meetings might be dangerous, so they also post messages on overhanging rocks by spraying urine. It's strong stuff so we can smell them too. Snow leopards share these mountains with local herders, and because predators like snow leopards and Tibetan wolves occasionally kill domestic stock, the local villages are a good place for us to find out if the big cats have been seen recently. Much of this area of the Himalaya is blessed with the Buddhist faith, and as this culture reveres all life, predators are usually tolerated. Rinjin visits these villages regularly, and as our horseman Namgel lives here, we'll always be on the local grapevine. Mind you, the villagers hardly ever see snow leopards, but they know that the cats do a lot of walking and have big territories, so finding them in this rugged terrain will be challenging. Snow leopards are only six to seven feet long and really well camouflaged. And we don't even know how many there are living here. A handful at most. One strategy that might help is to keep an eye on the snow leopard's favourite prey in these parts, the baral, a type of wild sheep. Baral look amazingly agile on these steep cliffs, but we're told this is also the snow leopard's favourite hiding place. So baral are always on the lookout for the superbly camouflaged cats. If they see a snow leopard, the barals should alert us, so we watch them carefully, but whenever possible, climb down to base camp at night. Working at 15,000 feet isn't far up by Everest standards, but it's high enough to make the lack of oxygen a potential killer. Sleeping lower down is safer, and in this cold, returning to camp is a welcome relief. Tasty meals are supplied by our Ladakhi team, giving us all a chance to discuss our strategy. Snow's good though. Good for track. Yes, uh, <laughs> yeah. Be worth trying. <coughs> Thanks, Sam. No, it's okay. Hello. Oh, gotta get out there. The team has a plan, but after just three weeks, the high altitude and freezing temperatures are taking their toll. Few have come this close to finding snow leopards before and they're discovering why.
All the walking has been with a purpose, for the team has been collecting every clue they can find. It means Mitchell can now get down to some clever detective work and maybe outsmart the snow leopards. Whenever any of us has found a pug mark or a fresh scrape or a rock spray or heard a vocalization, I've marked it on this map of the area. And all of a sudden, there are enough maps for a pattern to emerge. It seems that the snow leopards are favoring just the easiest routes to, to travel on. And this kind of information is priceless. Now we're really making progress. For by knowing 